Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day three of our cruise here on board the Norwegian Encore. My name is Zach. I am the traveling man. And this morning, I'm here on deck six in the main atrium. I come down to get my Starbucks. Going to head up soon to get breakfast. Probably going to go to the local grill again for that because I enjoyed it so much the last couple of days. And they had some other things on the menu that I wanted to try for breakfast. Uh, it's only about 7.40 in the morning. We actually are inside the inside passage this morning. We're making our way to Juno. That's our first stop. We're actually going to call there at 2.30 p.m. this afternoon uh, almost like a half of a sea day to go before we get to Juno. You know, it's very cold outside it's 42 degrees right now very windy it's actually kind of a little bit rainy so um, not sure what the day is going to be like I just know it's going to be cold when we get to Juno. it's not going to make it out of the I think mid 40s all day so remember that when you're packing for Alaska but uh, it's going to be a fun day uh, I'm going to go get breakfast and then at 11 I'm supposed to ride the go-kart so you're going to want to stick around this vlog because you know, we're going to check out the go-karts, the Encore Speedway up on deck 18, and I'm so excited for that. We're going to have several sea days incorporated into this one vlog, so you're going to see a lot of the Norwegian Encore this video. So make sure you go down below, hit that subscribe button right now, and come on if you're ready. Let's get this adventure here on board the Norwegian Encore started. All right, so all the way on the back of the ship here on deck eight, I wanted to show you real quick because I didn't get it in my other videos I put out so far. But this is the location of Cagney Steakhouse and Los Lobos, and Los Lobos is the Mexican specialty dining restaurant here on board. So here in between the two, there is the A-list bar, so one of the many bars here on board. And then to the right of that is Cagney Steakhouse, and I will be dining here tonight. I'm very excited about that. I think this is like the premier specialty dining experience. This is the one that everyone tries to get into. Uh, it's very hard to get reservations sometimes, uh, but this is the main steakhouse here. They also have outdoor seating out there. I don't think anyone will be taking advantage of that because it is very cold uh, but quite a big dining room you can see it goes all the way to the back of the ship and there is uh, you know some viewing back there some window seats you could see off the back of the ship it looks like the these tables here I just noticed behind the bar are also some additional seating for Cagney's as well now back here behind Cagney's this opening that actually looks down onto the Manhattan room the Manhattan room is one of the three main dining rooms here on board the ship. And you can see it right down there through the curtains. And then over here, this is Los Lobos. Again, the Mexican restaurant here on board the ship. This is specialty dining also. And uh, looks like about equally large dining room as Cagney's. So now crossing through the elevator bank here on deck eight, just near Cagney's and Los Lobos. And this is the uh, they call this the trade winds. These are the shops on board, and they're closed this morning since we are in U.S. waters again. Um, there's also the photo gallery right here, and then over here they have uh, jewelry, all sorts of watches, things like that. Uh, so if you want to come shopping, this is your place to do it here on deck eight. I think this entire promenade pretty much, well, all this back here is the photo gallery it looks like. And now just past the shops here on deck eight, we're getting back to the atrium. There's a Bulgari over there. Uh, another entrance to the watch shop right there. This opens down. This is Ocean Place 678. Uh, so you can see deck six down there, deck seven. Uh, the casino is on deck seven, and then we're now on deck eight. Uh, right here to my right is another specialty dining venue. This is Ocean Blue, another place I'll be dining this cruise. So make sure you come back for my food review video where I show you all the food I had on this cruise. But this is a nice venue. There's also outdoor seating here too. Uh, if you're sailing in a warmer climate and want to sit outside, this is Ocean Blue. Sugarcane is the mojito bar here on the ship. Uh, this is always very active place uh, in the daytime. Uh, on a sea day, there was a lot of people here yesterday. And then, one of the cool things about the bars and the venues here on board the ship is you can come out here to the waterfront. The waterfront is on deck eight, it's the deck outside. But Sugarcane Mojito Bar has a location here, right outside, they have a bar set up. Uh, so if it's not 42 degrees, you can come out here and sit. Uh, it looks like they also have Oh, they have some little breakfast items too, some little pastries and some coffee. So if you want to come out in the morning and uh, sit out here, there's a lot of seating on deck eight and a lot of bars are set up like this. This is Onda. This is the Italian specialty dining and I promise this is the last of this impromptu little deck eight ship tour. Uh, this is another specialty dining venue. Uh, this is the Italian restaurant on board. And like all the others, there is outdoor seating available as well. So I'm here now on deck 16 on the main pool deck and just wanted to note they are selling Norwegian Cruise Line branded jackets here. So if you did forget your jackets or didn't dress warmly enough, you can buy a jacket for $70. So uh, 
They have, looks like men's and women's here. And then they have gloves. Gloves looks like they're about $15 a pair. Might be something I might have to look into if I get really cold today because I forgot gloves. Uh, they also have some uh, little toboggan like hats here for $15. A wide assortment of those different ones that say Alaska. So uh, it looks like if you forgot anything, they've got you covered here. And then all sorts of little plush animals as well. Look like some little like knockoff squishmallows here. Um, so all sorts of different things that you can buy, Alaska branded stuff right here on the main pool deck. But I did just want to show this in case you are coming and maybe you realize, oh, I forgot, you know, to bring the right jacket or I didn't bring the right clothes or I'm cold, I didn't bring enough. Um, they do have stuff. So like me, I didn't bring gloves. Maybe I'll need gloves. I'm going to try it today with these bare hands. But if I get cold, uh, you know, I might have to invest in something like that. For I'm sure they'll be selling it again tomorrow when we're in Skagway. So, uh, just know that is sort of your last resort. They are selling jackets and stuff here. Probably, uh, I don't know actually. We'll look and see. Maybe there's jackets and stuff in Alaska, like in Juneau. Uh, but $75 for a jacket is, I think, pretty expensive. Uh, I'll have two jackets here. I actually have a Columbia rain jacket, and then underneath I've layered that over a Columbia fleece. I got these on Amazon. The fleece was like $35, and I think the rain jacket was like $60. So you're talking about $95 here. Um, and those jackets over there are just the fleece jacket for 75 So, you know, if you're coming to Alaska to sell Alaska, make sure that you do your shopping ahead of time. You know, look on Amazon, look at your local REI, Patagonia, you know, the places to shop. Those are places I went looking, but ultimately Amazon had the best prices. Um, and I will put a link down below to these two jackets that I got. And so far they're working out great. The temperature is but 47. It is raining. And I feel like I'm prepared for anything. So uh, that's sort of the jacket situation this morning that's the situation with things that you can buy here on the ship maybe if you've got stuff at home just wanted to let you know that there are options available here on board the ship the other situation this morning is that it's raining or it's not like raining hard it's just drizzle it's cold too um, so i'm not sure about my go-kart reservation it is 10 30 my go-kart reservation is at 11. let me pan around here y'all see those go-karts they're covered up. They're not going anywhere. They're not moving. So that may not be happening. And you know what? I'm kind of okay with that because I was dressing in all these layers to come up here. And I was like, oh, I can just feel that sting of the wind already on my face driving around this track in uh, 40 degree weather. So I'm going to walk over here. There are people over here. I'm going to walk over here and see what the situation is. But it's not looking like go-karts are are happening I'm kind of skeptical here are the go-karts you can see they are covered up because it is raining uh, but they're electric you can see the little chargers there hanging from the those little holders uh, so if you've ever driven or have an electric car you know about those chargers they look just like the chargers you plug your car into so that's pretty cool um, it looks like there's probably someone had asked me how many there were I would say there's probably at least 15 or 20 there's several there I know they do have some double and they have certain times of the day where they do double go-karts and then a lot, most of them I think are just single go-karts, but there they all are. So as I suspected, it is closed because it's raining and it's kind of like NASCAR, I guess. If it's raining, they have to like, you know, pause the race or whatever. Uh, you can see that the track is slick. I mean, it's wet right here. So, uh, I mean, I'd still do it, but they won't let me. It's cold too. So maybe I wouldn't. I know I, I told the lady, I woke up this morning and it was just so cold and I'm like, oh, I kind of dread 40 degrees, like riding around on a go-kart and that wind hitting you. I know they cover your face with like the helmet and stuff, but I, it was gonna be cold. So while I don't get to do it today, she did reschedule me uh, for the last day of the cruise. And that's when we're gonna be in Victoria, Canada, but we don't get to Victoria till like 8.30 in the evening. So basically it's a sea day. So I'm gonna do it that day. And uh, yeah, she said it was no problem rescheduling me because I'm a solo cruiser. I'm just, just one person, so. Maybe if you're traveling solo, you have a better odds of getting a reservation. Other than that though, they were completely booked up. She said they only had a few slots left for tomorrow afternoon, and then they were completely booked up for the rest of the cruise. So, I mean, you can see why, right? I've not seen the go-karts running yet on this cruise. So um, I guess they constantly have to rebook people. And also there's like over 4,500 people on this cruise. So a lot of people want to do the go-karts, uh, but unfortunately it's not happening today. So you have to keep watching to see me ride the go-karts because it's going to happen later in the cruise. Let me know in the comments if you would do the go-karts or have you done the go-karts on Norwegian. I think that's something that's unique to Norwegian. Uh, but would you do it? I would beat all of you. I guarantee you I would beat all of you. So let me know down in the comments if you would actually try the go-karts. I love go-karts. I was raised riding go-karts and racing go-karts. Uh, 
I'm pretty good, but it's just not it's not gonna happen today. So let's go let's go do something else. I'm all the way forward now. I think this is deck 18 forward, but this is the Vibe Beach Club. This is a like exclusive area. I think you can book this. This isn't a resort. The resort on board here is the Haven. Uh, this isn't the Haven. This is the Vibe Beach Club. It's very exclusive. I think it's hundreds of dollars per day to book into this. Uh, it should be free today. Who would want to be out here sitting out in this weather? But this is the Vibe Beach Club. I did want to show that because I am up here for the first time this cruise. Uh, but behind that door, uh, is the Vibe Beach Club and we'll look here and see what it's like okay so the door opened and I said why not this is the Vibe Beach Club I thought I would just walk in here real quick to show you all uh, the chairs in here there's some loungers it looks like uh, there is another hot tub right up here there's no kids in this one looks like there's also a bar right here quite an expansive bar too um, looks like there's some locker rooms right over there so actually quite a bit, a restroom right there, a shower here, and then more loungers just up ahead here. Yeah. So quite a bit of seating here, um, but so far it just looks like an exclusive area for you to, you know, come and lounge. Doesn't look like too much up here uh, in the way of, oh, and here's a Haven guest only. So if you have, if you're a guest of the Haven, I should say, this is where you could enter to go into the Haven. And then this is the, I guess the section of the deck that's just for the Haven guests. Good morning. It's now been many days since the last time I talked to you on one of these Sea Day vlogs. Um, we're now on the very last day of the cruise. We're actually sailing right now in the Pacific Ocean. We're on our way to Victoria, Canada today, Victoria, British Columbia. Uh, we're scheduled to arrive there about 6 p.m. It's currently about 10 a.m. So um, we got a good portion of the day at sea today, which is going to be nice. Today is actually going to be the day that I get to do my makeup ride on the go-karts. I have that for like 3.30 this afternoon, I think. So I'll finally get to show you that. It's a sunny day, you can see here behind me. So no rain. So hopefully that means they will actually be open and no other you know, elements will affect me being able to ride the go-karts today. Finally that time, the last day of the cruise, but it looks like go-karts are finally open. And uh, it's time for our reservation, so I'm gonna get checked in and we're gonna ride, but notice how quiet they are because they are electric, so they're not as loud as normal go-karts would be. It was kind of weird as I walked up the stairs just to hear this light buzz. It was like, where are the go-karts at? Why aren't they running? But they are, they're just electric. So here now you notice there are two lines. There is a standby line if you don't have a reservation and then also a reservation line, of course, for those who do have reservations. So we're gonna hop in the reservations line. Now we are all checked in and just waiting in line. You can see the end of the line up there around the corner. Uh, here's the current line. So uh, it's currently 3.30. So got checked in uh, a little bit before 3.30. There was a little bit of a wait over there. And now we'll see how long the actual wait is to get on the go-karts. So they are sectioning us off in groups for eight or nine. And it's that's how many are on at once. You can see up there, uh, there's like eight or nine people getting on at a time. But a uh, time check, it's uh, 3.55. So we've been in line for 25 minutes and barely moved. So uh, this is seeming like a a time commitment so far but uh, we'll see I'll give you the final time count once we get up there ready to board the go-karts So it ended up being an hour and 15 minutes in line. Got in line at 3.30, actually ended up boarding at like 4.45. So uh, uh, I don't think that's worth it. On a sea day, 
you know, there's so many things to do. It was very fun, but it's only eight minutes. Uh, so 75 minutes in exchange for eight minutes of fun. I don't know that that's worth it. I did hear someone else say in line though, they had the unlimited pass because they do sell an unlimited pass here for $199 for the week. It's just $15 for one ride. Uh, but they did say that it's not been this busy. They think it's this busy now because so many people are trying to make up the reservations where it was raining earlier in the week. So uh, it was pretty fun. Uh, I wouldn't do it again. That's the only time I would do it. But um, glad I got to at least do it once. And I did come in second of the 10 people I was racing with. And I was only six tenths of a second behind the guy in front of me. So I think I did, I did pretty well. I was pretty glad about that. But uh, I said I would beat anybody. I don't know. I guess I won't. But uh, yeah, it was okay. Definitely not going to do it again this cruise and probably not worth doing more than once on a cruise, especially given how long you have to wait for it. Now, if you're not riding and you want to get in on the fun, you can get these little uh, blasters that they have and you can try to aim at the go-karts as they come around and you can give them a little boost of energy there. See, you can give uh, your go-karts, there's actually a button on the steering wheel you can hit boost and uh, you get a little bit of a boost there. So that might be a little bit of fun if you're either waiting on someone who's riding or if you just want to... Uh, you know, get in on the fun and not actually ride yourself. Uh, and you can see there's a screen there that sort of tells you uh, how many hits and I guess your accuracy and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, another little fun element to the Norwegian Encore Speedway. So now we have reached the end of this last day on board the Norwegian Encore. What a great cruise it's been. I've really enjoyed my first time sailing with Norwegian. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, you know what to do. Go down below, give me a thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you on the next adventure.